Yeah, welcome along. After eight years, 102 games and two major finals, Gareth Southgate has resigned as England manager. Less than 48 hours after the 2-1 defeat to Spain in Berlin, he's announced his resignation, describing it as the honour of his life. Well, this is how the news was announced. At right on 11 o'clock from England's ex-account, they said this. After 102 games and almost eight years in charge, Gareth Southgate has announced he has to leave his role as manager of the Three Lions. Well, let's remind viewers who are just joining us of what Southgate has had to say. He said, as a proud Englishman, it has been the honour of my life to play for England and to manage England. It has meant everything to me and I have given it my all. But it's time for change and for a new chapter. Sunday's final in Berlin against Spain was my final game as England manager. I joined the FA in 2011, determined to improve English football. In that time, including eight years as England men's manager, I've been supported by some brilliant people who have my heartfelt thanks. I could not have had anyone better alongside me than Steve Holland. He is one of the most talented coaches of his generation and has been immense. I've had the privilege of leading a large group of players in 102 games. Every one of them has been proud to wear the three lines on their shirts and they've been a credit to their country in so many ways. The squad we took to Germany is full of exciting young talent and they can win the trophy we all dream of. I am so proud of them and I hope we get behind the players and the team at St George's Park and the FA who strive every day to improve English football and understand the power football has to drive positive change. My special thanks go to the backroom staff who have provided the players and me with unstinting support over the last eight years. Their hard work and commitment inspired me every day and I am so grateful to them, the brilliant team behind the team. We have the best fans in the world and their support has meant the world to me. I'm an England fan and I always will be. I look forward to watching and celebrating as the players go on to create more special memories and to connect and inspire the nation as we know they can. Thank you England for everything. Well, Southgate and the team left their hotel in Berlin yesterday before landing back at Stansted Airport. Sunday night's defeat to Spain proves to be his final game in charge. Well, here is his all-time record, 102 games in charge with 61 wins. His team scored 213 goals and conceded 72. It's a win rate of nearly 60%. Well, Southgate leaves having taken charge of the third most games of any England manager, only behind Sir Walter Winterbottom and World Cup winning manager Sir Alf Ramsey. He's the only man to lead them to two major finals and the only man to lead them to a major final on foreign soil. Well, senior reporter Rob Dorset and chief reporter Kavi Solokol have joined me now, uh, both uh, fresh off the plane from Germany following England during this tournament. And um, Kavi, let's start with you. What is just your initial reaction to this news? Um, I'd like to sit here and say I think this is the right decision, uh, but I'm not sure it is. I think it's the right decision for Gareth Southgate, but I don't think necessarily it's the right decision for England. Uh, I think being the England manager for eight years is a very long time. Gareth Southgate has had to put up with a lot of personal criticism that has crossed the line. I think that has affected him. I think that is one of the contributory factors uh, to his decision to leave. But I think overall he can be very proud of what he's achieved as England manager. He is the best England manager of the modern era. The only thing you can say he didn't do is win a major trophy. But since when have we judged England managers on the basis of how many major trophies they've won? I think he now deserves a rest. Uh, he needs to recharge his batteries. And I'm sure he will have lots of offers from clubs and also other national associations. Lots that you've said there, Cavi, that I want to get into. Rob, let's just come to you, though, in terms of the timing of all of this. Are you surprised by the timing? Because, like Cavi said, he deserves a rest. He could have gone, had a bit of a rest, had a bit of a think. What do you make of the timing? I don't think Cavi or I are either of us are surprised. I don't think anybody around the England camp is surprised. I interviewed Jude Bellingham just after that defeat in the final. And when I asked him about Gareth Southgate and whether he wanted him to stay on, he knew. I think he knew and everybody knew that this was the end of an era for Gareth Southgate and, and for England. Um, and I think Carve is absolutely right that it's, it's the level of criticism 
and abuse. It's not just criticism, it's abuse that we saw inside the stadiums uh, in Germany from some England fans, and not just the minority of England fans. I think that is what tipped him over the edge. And yet there's, there's, this, there's this strange duality of it all that, that I can't quite get my head round of, get my head round, that there were large groups of England supporters that didn't like Southgate, didn't think he was making the right decisions, wanted him to go. And that's been there for quite some time. And yet he is absolutely loved by the players, by the staff, by everybody at the FA, who think he's changed, not just changed the culture, but completely changed the environment. You have to remember that when Gareth Southgate took over as England manager, before that, there were a lot of, England, a lot of players who were qualified for England who, who didn't want to be there. In the Sir Alex Ferguson era at Manchester United, the Arsene Wenger era at Arsenal, a lot of those big players thought it was much more important to win trophies with their clubs than it was for their country. It was only since Gareth Southgate came in uh, and changed that environment that players wanted to play for England again, wanted to win a trophy with England again, came very close to winning a trophy with England. I mean, you look at his record, it is extraordinary. Um, the semi-finals of the, the World Cup in Russia, the quarter-finals of the World Cup in Qatar, and two successive European Championship finals. Yes, there's no trophy, but that record is, is unsurpassed. That's, that's in many ways better over a four-tournament spell than even Sir Alf Ramsey, who won the World Cup in 66, could manage. It's, we haven't seen that level of success before. So there's this strange split between large groups of England supporters who wanted him out, didn't think his tactics were right, and people within the camp, the players, the FA staff, that desperately wanted him to stay. And you look at that record there, and, and that will be his legacy. Yes, his legacy be, will be that we went another generation without winning a major trophy. But boy, we got very, very close under that man, didn't we? Yeah, and I mean, looking at that record, talking about that duality of how people are feeling as well, because I know people calling for him to go, but those same people feeling quite sad about this as well because of what he's done. I just wanted to pick up on the criticism a little bit with you, Cavi, because obviously you used the word abuse there, Rob. There was that beer throwing incident at the end of the Slovenia game as well. Do you think that was the kind of turning point maybe for Gareth Southgate where he realised that it actually goes beyond criticism? I think he decided that he was going to go. Um, before this tournament started. He gave an interview before the tournament. I think he said, uh, you know, unless uh, we win the Euros, uh, it's likely that I'm going to leave my position as England manager. So we kind of knew that it was going to happen. Even if he'd won it, I think there would have been a good, a good um, you know, good chance of him leaving. And I also think even if he'd won it, his critics would turn around and say, yeah, he won it, but he was, in the, he was on the lucky side of the draw. And also, with all these great players, Bellingham, Kane, Foden, he should have won more than just one Euros. So there was a sense, I think, sometimes that Gareth Southgate could never win with some of his critics. Now, to the people who say that tactically he's not great, what an absolutely ridiculous thing to say. This is a guy who has been playing and managing in football for what, 30, 35 years? And you're telling me that he doesn't know how to make substitutions. He doesn't know how to set up a team. He, he doesn't know how to change formations during, during a game. So absolutely laughable, some of the criticism he's had to put up with. And I think when we're talking about criticism, we also have to talk about the fact that during his time as England manager, what has happened is that more and more people are expressing their opinions on different platforms. So social media, podcasts, there's this relentless external noise that swirls around England, especially during major tournaments. And unfortunately, Gareth Southgate is the person who is the center of all this criticism. He's the one who has to take all the hits. And he's a human being. After a while, you just think, I don't need this anymore. You know, it's crossed a line. It's affecting people who are close to me. Yes, I love England. Yes, it's been the honor of my life to be the England manager for eight years. But you know what? I can have a holiday and then I can go get another job. And the next job I get, I'll probably be paid a lot more. And also, I won't have to put up with this level of constant criticism that I've had to put up with over the last couple of months Joe, and one, years. One of the points I make in, in relation to that is we're talking, you're talking about Gareth Southgate's tactical mouse there. I think we have to pay a little bit of a tribute here to Steve Holland, his assistant, because yes, Southgate is the figurehead, but Steve Holland came as part of the package. 
they were very much a coaching duo. Um, the tactics that they used, the players they selected, the atmosphere they created in camp was as much a part of Steve Holland's job as it was Gareth Southgate's. And Southgate relied very, very heavily on Steve Holland. Um, and so when we're talking about Southgate leaving, I think it will be a fundamental, not just the end of an era, but a changing of the guard. Because a lot of the backroom staff, a lot of the medics, a lot of the physios, the kit man, all of these people have been around this England squad because of Gareth Southgate, because they've enjoyed it, because they wanted to be part of his team. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens over the coming days and weeks about changes behind the scenes as well. Um, and you just wonder about the fact that Mark Bullingham said interim coach is a possibility. Could it be Steve Holland? We're talking about Lee Carsley, the under-21s manager. Could Steve Holland step up and be caretaker manager? It would be a seamless transition for a while while the FA do their due diligence in, in appointing the next manager. Just a yeah. thought. Well, let's come back and talk about it potential successors shortly. We're getting reaction to this all the time. Um, I just want to bring you, uh, Declan Rice has responded to the news on Instagram. This is what he said. Thank you, Gaffer. It's been a privilege to play for England under your guidance. Memories that will stay with me forever. All the best in your next adventure. Uh, and Gary Lineker has also taken to social media. He says, wishing Gareth Southgate all the very best in the future. He brought pride, respect and a togetherness to England that we hadn't seen for a long time. He was close, very close to footballing immortality and he always did the job with humility, decency and dignity. Thank you, Gareth. Um, let's just pick up on Declan Rice because we heard him speak saying that he had hoped that Southgate would stay on uh, until the World Cup. He really had an absolutely brilliant relationship with the players, it seems. He really developed something special between a manager and a set of players. How special was that, Cavi? Because it's something that we don't always see between managers and players. Uh, no, I mean, before Gareth Southgate came along, um, for long periods of time, there were cliques within England squads. So the Manchester United players would sit on their own. The Liverpool players would sit on their own. The Chelsea players would sit on their own. Uh, and we heard a couple of days ago from Rio Ferdinand, and he used to say that when he was at West Ham, he was very good friends with Frank Lampard. But when they uh, went to other clubs, Chelsea and Manchester United, and met up for England duty, they didn't like talking to each other because Rio Ferdinand felt that he didn't want to give anything away about what was going on at United to Frank Lampard. And it was the same for Lampard. He didn't want to give anything away from what was happening at Chelsea. Rio Ferdinand didn't really like talking to Steven Gerrard because Liverpool and Manchester United are such big rivals. Well, that all changed. That culture changed under Gareth Southgate. We also had the situation in the past where players didn't want to play for England, where they would be called up to England squads and they would say to their manager at their club, can you please ring up the FA and say I've got a hamstring injury because I don't want to go and spend two, three weeks with the England squad. So that has all changed. He's created a club atmosphere. He's totally changed the culture uh, of the England team. And it's all basically been down to Gareth Southgate. And I think we will miss him when he's gone. And I would not rule out the possibility, I'm not sure if I said say this, but I wouldn't <laughs> rule out the possibility of him coming back one day. Because if things go wrong, if things go wrong and we go back to the way it used to be before Gareth Southgate, I remember when England didn't qualify for tournaments, when England got knocked out at group stages, when they kept getting knocked out in the uh, round of 16, there will be a clamour, bring back Gareth. Where is, well, he'll be Sir Gareth by then as well. Bring back Sir Gareth. We need a night to sort out this mess. I've written it down, Cavi. 12.14 on the 16th of July. <laughs> Southgate will be back. I said um, it first. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> um, Rob, let's just go back in time a little bit because as Cavi was mentioning there, you've got to think back to 2016 and the state of this England national side when Southgate took over. Do some fans almost need to be reminded a little bit of how far they've come in that time? And actually, when you look to the future, you've got to think, good luck to the next man in charge. Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. It, it, ha it has been unprecedented success. And yet he didn't win a trophy, which Sir Alf Ramsey managed in 1966. And that was, let's be honest, the professed aim of the FA and the, the, the mission statement when they set up St George's Park, the National Football Centre, the, the centre of excellence, was to win trophies. Now, the Lionesses have managed it. 
Many of England's younger age groups have managed it, which absolutely vindicates St George's Park and the system that England have spent a huge amount of money and a huge amount of, of time and logistics planning and setting up. St George's Park is the envy of the world in terms of how they bring through young talent and develop talent. And yet the men's team hasn't been able to win a trophy. And that precious atmosphere that Carve was talking about needs to be protected. But if I'm honest, I think I've seen one or two cracks in that in recent times. There have been a number of players who've withdrawn from the squad at various times when there were friendlies, when there were Nations League games, games that they felt weren't so important, with a minor injury, and then they played for their club at the weekend. And Gareth Southgate was angered by that, and he felt that that was damaging, potentially, the culture. He only wanted England players there who wanted to be there. And so there are, every time we talk about team selection and squad selections for England, there's been a number of players that Gareth Southgate, we've had to answer questions about why they're, why they're not included, why are they not there? Now, I'm, I'm making absolutely no suggestion here that those players weren't injured, they absolutely were. But Gareth Southgate wanted players that wanted to be there that would run through a brick wall for him. And I'd, I'll just take you to something that Jude Bellingham said to me in that final interview that I did with him, the only England player to speak to us in, in post-match after that defeat in the final. And I get the sense that some of the big players felt it was time, that it was time for Gareth Southgate to move on. on the, just around the hour mark in that final, if you watch it back, I don't know if it was obvious on the TV pictures, but it was obvious to myself and Carve, Jude Bellingham was berating the England manager on the touchline, telling him to change the tactics. He was standing to him as close as I am to you. And Gareth Southgate went away quietly, respectfully, and spoke to Steve Holland about what they do next. I just get the sense that that perfect atmosphere, there were just some cracks beginning to show. And maybe that was a crucial part in Gareth Southgate's decision as well, because that was sacrosanct. That's the one thing he'd always had. If he couldn't maintain that atmosphere, if players didn't want to be playing for England again, if some of the elite players weren't quite on board with his messaging, I think that's when he thought it was time to go. We are going to talk loads more about this. There's loads more to get into, including successors. But just for now, how will Southgate be remembered? I mean, you said Sir Gareth Cavi. What will his legacy be? I think he'll be... Um, he'll go down in history as the greatest England manager of the modern era. The best England manager since Sir Ralph Ramsey. If it wasn't for a penalty shootout uh, at Wembley, England would have won the Euros. Uh, I think we will definitely miss him. Um, I wish him all the best. He's been an absolute uh, pleasure to deal with. People don't understand that, you know, being the England manager as well is you're an ambassador for English football all around the world. 